Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, of course. And today I have an amazing show for all my people who are really conscious about their health, about their eating habits, changing your eating habits so that you can live a longer, healthier life. Um, this young lady was with me uh, about a year ago. and We did part one, Holistic Health and Wellness. It's a top show online. People love it all around the world. Without further ado, I want to introduce, reintroduce Ms. Kaira Harris. Kai. How you doing? I'm good. Happy I'm to happy to be back. back. Part two. That's right. I'm excited. And you should be because, whole, I, you know, holistic health and wellness, I didn't realize how major of a topic it was or how many people want to really be, live a holistically healthy and wealthy lifestyle. Um, they're well over close to 5,000 views online, so wow. it's obvious that people definitely want to live a healthier lifestyle. So let's talk about it, because I know there's some new things happening. You know, we have swine flu and all these different things are happening, and people need to know some maybe some inside information of to what they can do and, and prepare. So, And with the arena of holistic health and wellness, what's new with that industry right now? Well, I think it's... I think it's the things that are new, but I think it's really the thing that you just need to stick with. Stick with the basics. Mm -hmm. Even when you talk about swine flu, sticking with the basics. I mean, we already, the, I think the reason for health becoming such like a big topic mm -hmm. and so popular is because of our kids. Right. I mean, if you look at our kids, um, at least 32% of um, our children are obese. Mm -hmm. And then the Bronx, especially, asthma is like, I think we're number one in asthma, um, number one in obesity. The South Bronx, this one zip code, and I want to say maybe it's a zip code that's close to 10455. So it's like uh, around 169th and Franklin Avenue. Yes. HIV. I mean, so it's a whole bunch of different things, a whole bunch of health issues right. that really center right in the Bronx. Right. Um, as well as just, of course, obviously, just around the world, around, you know, the different parts of New York. But health is just everybody. Every, if you think about it, the top, one of the top things that you need to make sure that you have in right. place is your health. Right. Because if you don't have your health, then you don't have anything else. You can't enjoy anything else. It doesn't exactly. matter how, how wealthy you are. You can't enjoy, you know, your, your God, whoever that is. Right. You can't enjoy your family. You can't enjoy anything if your health is not in top shape. So I think that's why it's become such, you know, such, so popular. Definitely. A lot of people don't realize that your quality of life is definitely important. Right. I think people are realizing now you have to um, eat to live as opposed to living to eat. Absolutely. Now, a lot of folks, you know, may be familiar, I've heard the term holistic health and mm -hmm. holistic wellness, but for those who are not, you know, that thoroughly um, knowledgeable about the area, just succinctly let us know what holistic health actually is. Well, for me, holistic health is basically looking at the person as a whole person. Mm -hmm. Holistic health is not just how much you eat or what you eat or how much you exercise. It's looking at everything, the, the umbrella of health. So you're looking at, you know, your stress level. You're looking at your spirituality, you're looking at your relationship. Do you have a positive relationship with yourself? Do you have a relationship with your higher power, whoever that may be? Mm -hmm. um, do you have, do you like your job? Right. Or do you like your career? If you don't, either change your attitude or change your job. Right. So, because those things also have effect on your health as well. So you can be as healthy as you want to be eating and exercising, but if you're stressed out or you don't even want to get up, get up out of bed to go do whatever it is that you're supposed to do, mm -hmm your health is still going to be declining. Deteriorating. So I would assume, unfortunately, in, in this time, this economic time that we're going through, a lot of people are, you know, experiencing a recession, ha unfortunately having to participate in it um, because maybe they're not in the position that they want to be in. And I'm sure that that level of stress and anxiety will definitely lend to um, the desire or the need to be more holistically um, conscious with what you consume. Absolutely. You. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, that's one, but then it's also... And it's a real challenge for someone who is, who's really directly affected by the recession. Right. Having a positive attitude. Your attitude, like your thoughts, your words, mm -hmm. that kind of, that really affects your health as well. So a lot of people don't realize that everything affects your health. It's not just the food. Because, again, eating as well as you want to eat. Right. But if you have a negative attitude or a negative mindset, your health is still going to deteriorate. And, and that's important. I was talking to a couple of teachers the other day, and they were just speaking about, you know, just, you know, just changing their diet and things of that nature. And, you know, they still realize that, you know, the job kind of stresses them. But, um, you know, you, you, wanna, you still you want to eat to live. And, you know, but, you know, a lot of people just have to recognize, you know, your diet is very, very um, much a part of, I think, who you are. Because if you're, if you're not unhappy with, you, with, with where you are, you may not eat right. You might uh, be depressed, and depression will cause you to probably eat the wrong things right. because you want to eat them. Um, but one thing they said, which, which was key, and it's so true, 
and I guess you can probably help individuals, um, you know, because a lot of times you see on the TV or in the papers look like three thousand dollars for three hundred dollars. Right. So one of the biggest issues, of course, with um, health and eating healthy is, unfortunately, it's expensive to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality is it's expensive to be healthy because it's expensive to go to the doctor to find out if you're healthy or not. So just that whole arena of of health um, is an expensive situation. But I want to understand before we talk about some of the things you have going on with the schools, you, know, mm -hmm. you got some programs and workshops, why is it really, really important for everyone, irrespective of their economic status, whether they make a lot of money or not, how important it is for them to really start, you know, recognizing how to be efficient spenders in what they buy and consume for them and their families? Well, I beg to differ. When you say that um, being healthy is expensive, uh -huh. I mean, there's, there's ways that you can kind of cut around that. Right. Um, you can go to co-ops, food co-ops. Okay. Which there's one, and there's a big one in Brooklyn. Um, and then there's, uh, I want to say, the Green Market down in uh, Union Square. Okay, yeah. There's I'm also a Green there. Market in um, uh, Hunts Point, okay. right in the Bronx. Uh, there's another one that's in Inwood. Mm -hmm. That's um, Isham and between Seaman and Park Terrace West. Okay. I mean, so there's a number of different pockets of right. places that you can go where the, the local farmer comes mm. and brings, you know, whatever it is that they've, they've grown to sell right. at a cheaper rate. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, so, I mean, it's that. But then the other thing is also this, this Trader Joe's, okay. which is a, actually a cheaper store than, like, a Whole Foods. Don't get me wrong. I right. love Whole Foods. I, right. And, and I think you pay for I mean, you get what you pay for. I'm not saying with Trader Joe's that it's not good. Mm -hmm. It's just that, for me, my experience with, like, Whole Foods, it's the experience right. of, you know, you speak to anyone, because I've gone to stores where you go someplace, you, people work there, you ask them a question, they have no idea what you're talking about. Right. You go, at least in my experience, you've gone to Whole Foods, you ask the people, you know, whatever it is, anywhere in the store, and they can, they'll walk you there, they know the information, and so you just feel like you're getting a real service. Same with Fairway, I mean, it just depends on where you are. And, and, and I, I hear what you're saying, like, you know, I was just presenting the, uh, the thoughts of the people I talked to, I said, listen, People spend a hundred and something dollars on one shirt, but you wouldn't spend a hundred dollars on one steak, right? You know, I'm like, so I, I, I'm like you. I eat to live, you and know. Some people do. And some people will, you know, if you have it. But the reality, like you said, there are ways around everything. There's always Absolutely. a ways to eat healthy um, if you're really committed to it. Now I want to talk about something. Wait, that's let real. me just let me mm -hmm. just cut you off right there. The other thing is a lot of people, when you look at what's expensive and what's not, if you look at vegetables and beans and right. fruits and looking at organic. It might be a little more expensive, but it's not like that's not what's really, really expensive. The things that are really expensive, or what others would consider really expensive, are the meats. Right. And so I'm like, and I'm not a vegetarian, so I'm not trying to, you know, push for vegetarianism. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking to cut costs, maybe don't eat so much meat because meat is really not good for you anyway. Right. Um, so you know, looking at like using the leaner meat, getting some other proteins in, as as opposed to always thinking you have to have a meat, a, a, yeah, meat, a vegetable, and a starch, you know, maybe cut back on that and use your protein, get some beans, you know, use, use something else where you can actually cut the cost. You don't have to eat meat every single day, but you do need to consume protein every single day. Okay. And you can do it through various ways, the shakes, beans, nuts, you name okay. it. So, yeah, so basically you can, you, can, uh, you can be healthy on a budget essentially, irrespective of what it is. Right. Now, I want to talk about something that's really key, and, 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 we'll, and this will kind of lead into, you know, what you're doing right now with the workshops and the kids. Mm -hmm. We were talking offset about, you know, our kids. The youth these days are, you know, definitely, um, it's, I think they were saying three out of five kids in America are obese, um, and that's serious. And I really want to talk about, you know, what we need to do as a community, as families, to work with our kids and help them eat more holistically or just more healthily? What, what, what can we start to do? Whether you're making $100,000 a year or you're making $10,000 a year, what's some things we can really start doing and recognizing? A uh, basic thing. And at the fire, I always say you got to go back to the basics. I mm -hmm. mean, for those like my parents' generation, um, if I would say, you know, think back to when you were younger, what you ate, and do those things. Right. And when I say that, like when it comes to the kids now, education. Mm -hmm. it, it, education is key. Because it's not that they don't, it's not that they don't, want to do it I just don't think at least in my experience they don't know right and so when I come in they're like oh she's healthy the food <laughs> must be nasty and I'm right. like the food's not nasty and when I bring things in because what I do now is every single time I do go in and work with the children um, and I work in high schools I work in you know um, 
elementary school. So I right. work with little ones, I work with high school, I work with all ages. Okay. But when I do, I bring food because food, everybody, adults are happy with food, kids are happy with food. But the main reason I do it is to show them that eating healthy doesn't have to taste nasty or doesn't right. have to be bland or anything like that. So basically exposure. I wonder, where, do, you, do you recall, where, where, where did the stigma and where did it create that healthy food is nasty? Why? Because they think vegetables, we just think vegetables are healthy and we don't like beets and turnips, so all vegetables, right. all I, healthy I don't know food where must that not came be right. From. I'm like, I don't know. My parents, I, I would definitely say my parents lucked out because myself, me and my brother uh, love vegetables. Me we too. Just, I can say. So I'm like, but now it's, you know, anything that's quick, anything that's in a box, a pop tart, a, you know, whatever it right. is, anything they can grab is what they're looking to eat. Um, also, so the other thing is the media. Yes. I mean, you know, watching TV, I have a, mentor, I have a mentee mm -hmm. who's 13, and the thing that she says, I'm like, but where'd you get that from? She's like, well, the commercial said. Right. And so I'm like, you know, it just, if you don't know, you don't know. So, you know, the, the media feeds you yeah. all these, drink soda, drink, you know, so all these other things. I don't even obesity. give brands, but, you know, drink all these things and eat all these things, and you'll still be, you know, still look trim, and you'll still be okay, and it's good for you. Like, I just have to constantly educate them on this, the food business, it's a business. Nobody is the advocate. You, you are your own advocate. That's right. And your parents should be your, your advocate as well. But again, that's why I also do parent training, because the parents don't know either. So, you right. know, I, I come in, do parent trainings. I do staff development workshops as well, as well as working with the kids. I'm like, it's great that the kids, you know, get educated. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, the kids are not the ones who go to the stores and buy food. Exactly. So I'm like, you know, they can nag and nag, but, you know, the person who... The key person who really needs to know, well, why does my child say, let me go get the broccoli instead of, you know, picking up, I don't know, picking up some kind of box food. Right. Um, or why not get the, why, do, why, why does my child keep saying get some fresh or frozen vegetable as opposed to the canned vegetable? Right, so right. So if I educate the parent as well as the child, then everybody is pretty much on the same page and everybody understands why they need to or how they can be healthy. Okay. So now, since we started talking about it, I, I know I want to, first I want to congratulate you because I know that you had gotten your program into a school, I think, in last, last spring. Oh, a number of schools. A uh, number of schools. You were doing your, bringing a holistic health and wellness to the schools. Mm -hmm. So I want to first talk about, you know, that whole process and, and, and how that's going. And then what, what, you know, what made you decide, you know what, let me start talking to the schools and get into the schools and, and how the receptivity been. Well, okay, what, let me just tell you, I'm also a speech pathologist. Right, and right. And so what really, what really sparked my interest, one, is my own health. I, I go to a naturopathic doctor who I've been going to since 2003. I've always been pretty passionate about, you know, just being healthy, exercising, you know, liking the way I look, right, right. liking the way I feel. And then when I saw, when I worked with my naturopathic doctor, I was like, you know, I think I want to do what she does. Because mm -hmm. even going in, doing the speech pathology and going into the homes with the children, I work with early intervention, so zero to three years of age. Okay. Um, you know, go in at 9 a.m. and it's a lollipop in the child's mouth. And I'm like, what are you doing? Right. You know, I mean, I can't really strangle the parent, but right. I do want to strangle the parent. Or, you know, the child's drinking soda or quarter water, but, you know, just junk. Right. Um, and so seeing that on a daily basis, and then they wonder, well, why, how come my child's not functioning the way they should? Right. And I think that the parent was the cause. But you're not helping the situation right. when, you're, when you're not feeding, when you're not giving your child nourishment and nutrients to help their brain and their bodies to, to develop the way they're supposed to. And so in looking at that, I decided, you know what, I want to still work with children, but I really want to go in the health and, and wellness arena. Okay. Um, and then I decided, well, why don't I go into the schools? I mean, I'll go back to school, you know, get my certification, right. all, the, all the things that I need to do. But I really want to go into the schools. I mean, I like working with the groups. I like the energy of kids. And I like the innocence of kids. And their, their, their openness to trying anything. Mm -hmm. It's funny, because when I'm working with the adults as opposed to working with the kids, the kids at first might be like, I don't want to try it. And I'm like, look, you're trying it. And right. they do. Right. And then when they try it, it's like, oh, well, maybe I'll, I'll have a little bit more. Right. So, you know, like, oh, one child I can remember just was not going to eat apple butter, had never heard of apple butter before. Mm -hmm. And then I dipped his finger in, he had to lick it, and he was like, oh, can I have some more apple butter? I mean, so it's just right. a matter of exposure. Exposure. I was like, but then with my high school student, they're, they're open, but they're definitely not as open as like my little three-year-olds, four-year-olds, right. five-year-olds. So just going into the different schools, it just, I wanted to go into the different schools because I wanted to affect the mass, the right. masses. I mean, I started out doing like individual counseling. Right. Which is, it's, it's fine, but I'm like, I like, I like the energy of a group. Right. I like to feel like I'm affecting 
a bigger group as opposed to just you know, just one-on-one. -on -one. Right. So now when you do these um, residencies, because I, I, I have my young producers program and I call them residencies because you're not there, you're not a teacher, you're not in there normally, you come in there once a week. How often do you go to the school? It depends on the school. I mean, okay. there's, some, there's a couple of schools that go into, it'll be once a week for right. like two, three months. Okay. Um, it might be four times a semester. It might be, it just depends on whatever the contract is that we have. Right. So I come in as a consultant. So every time they see me, it's like, yeah, we're going to eat. Right, you right. Because so, now they're excited. Because they're like, okay, well, we know that, you know, she's bringing healthy food, but she, we also know that the food tastes good. Right. And then I come with the information as well. So it's not just eat this, but it's eat this. This is why you want to eat it. This is how it's good for you. That kind of thing. Right. And then for the little ones, I do a lot of, um, because I have the speech pathology background, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's, a, it's like a language lesson with cooking. Right. So like for a three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, we're not going to use an oven stove, you know, anything that's going to, you know, possibly hurt them. Right. So the most we might use is a blender. Okay. And they they love it. I mean, I love it because I just like seeing their faces and the, the excitement of them making their own foods. Mm -hmm. But And then it, it empowers them. I'm like, you know, you can do, you're three, but you can still make your own, I mean, obviously with some supervision, right. you can still make your own meal. You can cut up a couple of things. You can help mommy sure. and daddy, you know, in the kitchen, that kind of thing. And it can be a family activity as opposed to, okay, mommy does right. or daddy does. And I think that's what's so critical and what's so key. When the family's involved, when all parties involved, then it's not like, oh, that's mommy's diet right. or that's daddy's diet. No, that's the family's eating habits. Right. That's how we all eat. And then we all grow together and we grow healthier together. Now, I want to ask you, now, you say you also do the, a parent workshop or parent workshop with regard to the health and wellness class. I just want to really mm -hmm. expose and, and spotlight, you know, each component that you bring to the school because I know mm -hmm. you're dealing with the kids. But maybe in the evening, are you working with, you do something in the evening with parents or when they come home from school well, or something like that? Well, I've gone into um, different shelters. Okay. And work with the parents in that aspect. I've mm. also gone into different schools. Of course, you know, schools have PTAs. Right. And they're like, well, you know, why don't you come in and talk to our parents? So I'm always open to coming in to doing a workshop with the parents. Because again, you know, mm -hmm. the kids need to be educated, but more, I should say just as importantly, okay. the parents need to be educated, too. All right. So I go into the schools, I go into shelters, I go into different organizations and just do workshops and trainings. I even work with the staff. Mm. I'm like, a lot of people don't realize, you know, people send their children to school, but they don't realize that the teachers, they need to be taken care of. Right. So right now I'm in, um, at Eagle Academy okay. in the Bronx, and I'm doing staff development workshop there. Those teachers, I commend them. I commend you. Because they work hard. Yes. I mean, work hard. And, and that's the thing. It's great that you want to work hard and they're dedicated and they're committed. But in being dedicated and committed, they have to also remember themselves first. Right. So it's big to, and that's, that's where I really come in to say, look, you know, that's great. I commend you. But what are you doing for yourself? Right. Are you, are you nourishing yourself, you know, just spiritually? Are you nourishing yourself? Are you taking a breath? Are you, are you eating correctly? Are you, what are you doing for yourself to mm. really make sure that, you know, you want to give so much, but in order to give, you need to make sure that you replenish who you are first. Right. Now, so what I want to do, because, you know, a lot of people say, well, it sounds good. I want to eat healthy. I want to eat right. Um, but maybe, oh, I don't have the money, or I do have the money. I don't know what to buy. So say someone's on a, I'm not going to say a shoestring budget. Let's say, you know, you're modest, you work, and you can, you can afford, you're single, maybe you have two kids, but you want to eat healthy, and you really make that sacrifice. What's some... Um, foods that individuals um, d definitely need to consume, you know, at least daily or weekly? What certain foods we should be definitely mindful of um, on our quest to be healthier and live a more healthy and wealthy lifestyle? Uh, the biggest food, like the main food, leafy greens. Leafy greens. Leafy greens, like collard greens, not collard greens with the ham hocks and not in the pressure cooker. Right. Okay, just remember this. So I'm going to say collard greens, um, Swiss chard, kale, dandelion greens, beet greens, any kind of leafy, that look like leaves, greens. Okay. Um, and when you cook them, you can saute them, you can steam them. I, pref I personally like them sauteed. And when you do it, you can have like a water base. You can even do like a light oil, like a light olive oil. And when I say light, not light olive oil, but a little bit of right, right. olive oil um, to saute it. But make sure it's a bright green. Okay. If it's a bright green, you still have the nutrients. If it's a dark green and it looks wilted, you have no more nutrients. So a lot of people cook it and they overcook it and it tastes good. Right. And they think, oh, I'm getting vegetables in. And you are, but you're not getting any vitamins, any nutrients that nature intended for you to have. So you mean you can actually cook the nutrients out of the vegetable? Absolutely. 
No, did that, did that come from cooking it too long? Yeah, or? it's from cooking it too long. It's, that's exactly what it is, from cooking it too long. So how do you know how long is too long? Like, how would someone know? Like, I'm an amateur. If I threw some pot of greens on there, I wouldn't know. Well, I didn't know. I wouldn't know that I've cooked it too long. The and color. now it's, uh, or the, the color. color. You just want to make sure it's like a bright, it's like a pretty bright green. From the beginning and at the end? Or? Yeah, well, when you start, of course, it's just fresh. Right. And then you want to just kind of, you want to kind of cook it, but lightly cook it. I mean, you don't want to, you know, deep fry it kind of thing. Right, right. And you don't want to, even like when we, if you do like holidays with the family. Yes. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Yes. But, you know, holidays with the family, you got your, your macaroni and cheese and turkey and everything else. Then you have your greens, and mm -hmm. your greens are like a forest green. They're like dark. Right. And they taste good again. They're delicious. But there's no, no, there's no nutrients. nutrients in there. So you definitely want to do um, leafy greens. You want to eat fruit. Um, you don't, I personally say that you do not have to eat five fruits a day. And if you do want to eat fruit every single day, and the reason why I say that is because fruit has a lot of sugar in it. Mm. And people say, oh, but it's fruit. It's natural sugar. But sugar, from if you see the part one of my show, um, sugar, whether it's natural or refined, is going to do the same thing in the body. So what you really want to do is look at, um, if you're going to do uh, fruit every single day, make sure you're doing berries. Mm. So you're doing like the strawberries, the blueberries, boysenberries, elderberries. I mean, any kind of berry you can think of, right. you can consume those. And of course, people say, well, I eat a banana every day. That's fine, too. But also, you want to make sure that you get water in every single day. Definitely. Water and enough water, not just a little bit. Right. Preferably room temperature. However way you take it, just make sure you get some water into your, di into now, your diet. Now, that's critical because you're at room temperature. Because, you know, I, I know that we're supposed to drink water or consume most beverages at room temperature. Right. Um, but for some reason, we, we want it cold. You know, like, it's not like it's just better cold. Is there a difference um, effect is, or there's a negative or adverse effect internally that we don't see when you drink cold water as it's opposed to, to room system. temperature? It's a shock to your system. And it's a shock to your system it's primarily a, because our body is 98.6. Right. So if you're putting, you know, 20, 24, 24 degrees or 32 degree water in your system, it's like that's why it's like, <sighs> right. it's so because right. your body it feels refreshing, but right. your body is like, right. what's happening, right? Right. right. Although, but if it's summertime, uh -huh. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm drinking cold water as right. well because you want it to be something refreshing. And not to say that your body is not going to, you know, change the temperature, mm -hmm. but initially it's going to be a shock to the system and then your body will change, you know, change the temperature back to where it needs to be in order right. for your body to consume it. But, um, yeah, to make it easier on your system, mm -hmm. just do room temperature. But summertime, obviously, you're going to do. Okay, and I want to ask this oh. one. Soy milk? Also, I'm sorry, also okay. make sure you eat protein. Okay, plenty, of protein. plenty of protein. Yeah, protein, and when I say protein, you can do carbs, but carb, uh, carbs, when I say carbs, complex carbohydrates, if you want to do like whole grains, like um, brown rice, oatmeal. Okay. I'm not a big oatmeal fan during the summer, but right. you know, the colder months, definitely. Um, quinoa, if you know what it is. Quinoa? Quinoa. It's like another type of grain. Okay. A lot of people, I should, I could say a lot of people don't know about it, but you right. go into, if you go to like restaurants, more and more restaurants are starting to, you know, bring in or, or introduce other types of grains, especially the, I should say the healthier restaurants. All right. Now, one question I have, you know, the time moves so fast when we're talking and soy talking milk. about health. Soy milk, skim milk, whole milk, 2%. I drink 2% milk. I don't like whole milk, whether it's lactose, whether it, just, it seems like it's different. But some people say, oh, it's no difference. Is there a difference in those four different soy milk, skim milk, whole milk, 2%? Yeah. The, okay. Soy milk um, has estrogen in it. Okay. Soy milk is very processed. So soy milk is really not the best for you. So soy milk, estrogen, that's the female hormone, correct? Right. So I don't want to drink a whole lot of soy milk. You don't want to drink any. Right. You don't have to. Right, right. not at all. You don't okay. want that. No. <laughs> um, what you can do, because most people are like, well, what kind of milk should I drink? Right. Rice milk. Rice milk. Almond milk. Okay. Um, goat's milk, right. which is actually really good. What, what about Parmalat? Have you, what's this thing that, what is that? Is this boxed, boxed milk? It's in a box. You ever heard of it, Parmalat? I've heard of it. Just another milk product, huh? That, yeah. Yeah. Now, is there a difference between 2% and whole milk? There is. I mean, and I think it's, uh, with that, I think it's just really your preference. I'm not really big on dairy anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big, um, I guess, supporter of it. Right. I think um, just drinking dairy and people saying, oh, you need to get your calcium in, I think that's really a business as opposed to the fact that you need to put milk in your system. Right. Milk uh, from what, the Asian community, black community, or the African-American community, black community, um, 
a lot of us are lactose intolerant. Right. So if you need to get calcium, you can get it from your leafy greens. You can get it from the other, from foods that mm -hmm. you would normally consume anyway. So you don't need to have milk in your system. And real quickly, any rich calcium foods that we may not realize that we can utilize a supplement as opposed yeah, to just milk? Yeah, you can, um, you can do broccoli, you can do sardines. Sardines. And I was like, yeah, everybody likes sardines. Right. I happen, I happen to like them. But any leafy greens, the okay. leafy greens so are high in calcium. Definitely you want to keep leafy greens. Absolutely. And now, does it make a difference if they're frozen or fresh? I mean, I'm sure fro fresh is better than frozen. Right. But you think you, you can find frozen vegetables that will be good? Yeah. I'm okay. like, it, it, again, it depends on your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, if, if you're not going to be able to consume it right away, if you're the only one who lives in the house and, you you know, you're not going to cook it, you know, the next two, three days, mm -hmm. then get frozen. Get, get whatever you can work with. Okay. But I would say do fresh first, frozen, and just don't do canned. Okay, okay. Well, my people at home, you know, it's all about staying healthy, thinking healthy, having a positive attitude because, once again, your attitude and how you feel on the inside directly affects how you're going to execute yourselves on the outside. Right. So make sure you eat your leafy vegetables, get your grain, get your rice, um, check out Whole Foods or some of the other places that Ms. Harris has talked about. It's not as expensive as you realize to, um, you may think to be healthy, but think about this, how much more expensive will that medical bill be if you don't be right and put what's right in your body? Absolutely. As we we'll always say, I want to thank my guest, Ms. Kyira Harris, for being a part of the show tonight. Thank you. Be mindful, be prosperous. Check out urbanwallstreet.biz because we're doing some amazing things internationally. And I'm like I always say, until I see you next time, keep your mind right, stay focused, be positive and productive. Peace.